Hello ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in again to me, Cam TV. It's always a pleasure to know that you stay tuned with us. At this time in America, when career options are sprouting but budget is tight and few companies are hiring, making career choices requires extra foresight and careful planning. My guest today is a practicing pharmacist, and tonight we intend to dissect and then digest the career of a pharmacist. At the end of this discussion, we intend to answer the following questions. How long does it take to become a pharmacist? What does it take to become a pharmacist? And what do you take home when you're a pharmacist? Dr. Ndifo, warm welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Mr. Kenneth Forbin. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Mincam TV uh, for taking this bright opportunity of bringing career pathways to uh, the members of our Cameroon community here in Minnesota. Now, out of curiosity, if you were to make the decision you made several years back to become a pharmacist today, would you make that same decision? I will definitely do, Mr. Kenneth Forbin. What would be your motivation? Uh, first of all, I would like to say that pharmacy to me means a lot. We play a vital part in the healthcare team um, and I would like to emphasize here that there is no other professional in the healthcare team that knows uh, drugs better than a pharmacist. Um, pharmacy has uh, outstanding career opportunities, especially at this point where the baby boomer generation is growing older and there is an increasing need of them um, uh, needing drugs in the future. And uh, it has a wide variety of healthcare and industrial uh, opportunities where pharmacists can work. And the last but not the least, um, it has excellent earning pot potentials as well as uh, it's a trusted profession. Uh, just for your information, um, I would pull uh, some data from um, November 2003 from the Gallup poll that says uh, pharmacists are one of the highly trusted members of the healthcare team in every profession that healthcare entails. Now, let me ask you this, however, because there's this general impression that the pharmacist is generally that person who stands behind the counter pushing drugs. What are the different options of, of, of the pharmacy profession? Uh, as a matter of fact, you are very correct, Mr. Kenneth Forbin. Uh, traditionally, people think of the pharmacist as somebody who stands, as that person who stands behind the counter and pushes drugs. But uh, there has been a shift from that point since uh, 1999 when the uh, pharmacy curriculum was standardized uh, to a doctor of pharmacy program. I would like to highlight here that before the year 1999 when that standardization happened, uh, the curriculum had a bachelor's of pharmacy degree as well as a master's degree of pharmacy. Uh, so with that expansion and with that standardization, um, there has been quite um, a, a shift from the traditional pharmacist to broaden career opportunities and practicing opportunities for pharmacy. So what does it take to become a pharmacist? And what are the, there are certain prerequisites that you have to acquire in order to get into pharmacy school. And top of on my head here, I would like to highlight uh, um, general chemistry. Uh, there are two parts of it that you have to fulfill. Um, there is organic chemistry, two parts as well. Uh, there is general biology in two parts. Uh, there is anatomy and physiology. Uh, there is physics, microbiology, mathematics with a high emphasis in calculus. Um, of course, we are a communicating profession and you have to be able to master your English. So um, you would have to take uh, English one and two as well as... What are the different options while you're a pharmacist? What are the different branches of, of, of pharmacy? Uh, apart from pushing drugs from behind the counter, are there other options? I mean, you have, uh, you are not pushing drugs behind the counter, you are actually working in a hospital. So what are the different options when one plans to become a pharmacist that they can expect to... That is very true, Mr. Forbin. Like I said in my first uh, 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 response to you here, uh, pharmacy is one of those uh, careers that has a broad range of opportunities and a broad range of career opportunities as well. Um, we Pharmacists can practice in different settings. Um, there is academic pharmacy. Those include people who actually um, teach in, um, um, in schools of pharmacy, the, those fac faculty and staff. Uh, we have community pharmacy, those people who traditionally push drugs behind the counter. Uh, 
as a pharmacist, you can work with government agencies in different capacities. Um, you can work in long-term care, uh, nursing homes, transition care units, and of course, assisted living facilities. Uh, in that capacity, you would be doing consulting pharmacy. Um, you can do uh, medical and scientific publishing as a pharmacist. Uh, you can work in pharmaceutical companies doing research and development. And you can, you know, work as a public health uh, 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 servant as well as a pharmacist. And typically, the thing is, how much time does it take to become a pharmacist? I guess, uh, yeah, there's always a question, how long would it take somebody to become a pharmacist? Thank you for that uh, important question, Mr. Forbin. Um, Traditionally, um, about 80% of people uh, seeking admission into pharmacy school already have a bachelor's degree, but at this time it's not a requirement. The only requirement uh, that you need to have would be to uh, complete all those prerequisites that are enumerated here in my last question, um, which included the general sciences and some social sciences as well. Uh, that would take you at least two full academic years to complete those prerequisites. And then after you complete those, um, maybe in a community college or in a university, then you want to apply to enter the professional doctor of pharmacy program. That would take you four full academic years to complete the program. So total um, didactic curriculum would be about six years of schooling. Then after uh, school, graduation from school, if you want to you know, specialize in, in, in different practices of pharmacy, you might probably want to consider getting into a residency. And those residencies can go from a year to three years, depending on the specialty that you want to pick as a pharmacist. So total, that would take you a minimum of about uh, seven to eight years or even more. Seven to eight years, that's quite so much time investing and I understand that there's the return in investment, but let's talk before we get into how much you make as a pharmacist, of course, which is why immigrants and everyone would be encouraged to join such a profession. There is also the question of how much does it cost? At a time when budget is really tight and, and, and companies are not hiring, one needs to look carefully into how much does it, does it cost to become a pharmacist. Uh, I, that is an interesting question. Um, uh, going through the pharmacy program is a very, it's, it's a pretty spendy deal, and um, but it's a worthwhile um, uh, deal because um, you would probably get your uh, some return on your investment when you're done with school. Uh, practically, it would take you about you know at this in this day and age um, up to about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to graduate through the program and practice as a pharmacist. A hundred and fifty thousand dollars of perhaps student loan and at least six years of studies. Why don't you sweeten this deal a little bit? What do you take home as a pharmacist? Well, that is a good question, Mr. Kenneth Forbin. Uh, again, I'm going to throw in some statistics here that I got from uh, drugtopics.com. Um, from what they gathered in 2010, the entry uh, salary of a pharmacist per annum go from between 117,000 to 140,000. That would be straight out of school. Straight out of school, 140,000, 114,000 to? 117,000 to 140,000. And I would like to highlight here that that's the national average. It okay. might vary from region to from region, region, but to that region. is the national average that I got from uh, those statistics on uh, droptopics.com. Now let's talk about networking, especially when you're doing your residency, because I know with medical doctors it's sometimes a problem when you, it's difficult to find residency. As a practicing pharmacist, what are some of the uh, suggestions you can give to those who are currently in pharmacy school who intend to pick up residency? Uh, what suggestions do you give them so that they can begin networking a little early and what are the networking resources they can use to make sure that they get a place in residency as soon as they're getting out of school? Um, I, in my personal opinion and in my own personal experience going through the program, it is so, so important for uh, you know, students and other uh, potential uh, students to, 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 to network with those professional organizations that pertain to pharmacy. Just in the state of Minnesota, there are a host of those organizations. Uh, just at the top of my mind here, I can think of uh, the uh, Minnesota uh, Society of Hospital Pharmacists. 
there is the Minnesota Association of Pharmacists, and even at the national level, you have the American Association of Pharmacists. So there are just a bunch of uh, professional associations out there uh, whereby uh, networking can, 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 can be possible. Now, one of the reasons why we, we, we are running through this idea of career pathways as, as a subsection of the Education Committee's agenda is because as immigrant community, as an immigrant community in America, the dimension is a little different. As an immigrant, your challenges are a lot more different than someone else. Now, looking at our Cameroon community, what are some of the suggestions you can give to the young and aspiring people who are growing up to bear in mind, or maybe I should put it this way, does being an immigrant affect your possibility of succeeding as a pharmacist? Um, I would like to bring your attention to some statistics, to some statistics here from the year 2010. Um, for those entering into pharmacy school for that year, I got this, uh, uh, those statistics from the uh, American Association of Colleges of Pharmacy. Uh, the profile of those entering pharmacy school in 2010, uh, they had a cumulative GPA of about 3.4. So uh, I would advise those uh, potential or aspiring pharm pharmacists to, to, to actually work harder in school to achieve that GPA of 3.4 or even higher. Um, about 60% of those who entered uh, in 2010 uh, were female and about 40% were male. And increasingly, it's becoming a disproportionate uh, profession in terms of, uh, of uh, gender. Females are taking the upper hand at this point. Um, and then I would like to draw your attention to the fact that it is a highly competitive program across the board. Um, for the entering class of 2010, there were about eight people competing for one seat, averagely, nationally. Now, let's talk a little bit about being an immigrant because we're looking at our Cameroon community and, and one of the things the career pathway is, is, is out to achieve is to be able to create nexus, areas for possible network. Uh, do we have enough pharmacists in our community and uh, are you working with these pharmacists to make sure that they can be able to pull these young people from the bootstrap up? giving them the kind of resources, the kind of information they need to chart their path uh, in becoming a career pharmacist. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kenneth Forbin. As a matter of fact, the Cameroon community in Minnesota is blessed to have a lot of pharmacists uh, amongst them. Uh, just at the top of my head here, I can think of about seven um, pharmacists uh, with us. And I think they are more than willing. I have had a discussion with uh, most of them, and they are very willing to, to help uh, the younger people or those who are interested in the career of pharmacy to pick, uh, pick up their hand and, and let them grow and, and, and grow an interest in the career of pharmacy. Now, every rose flower has thorns, and I understand we have to be very honest in such discussions, especially when we are talking to the young ones in our community, that if when you quote the figures of six figures right away from school, we should be able to talk about the risk involved, the challenges. What are some of the challenges first you face as being a pharmacist and, if you may add, as being an immigrant pharmacist? Jumping into pharmacy, also think about the long hours that pharmacists uh, work. And uh, at the same time, pharmacists work uh, mostly on their feet. You know, about 80% of your, of your shift, you would work on your feet. So those are just the few challenges that um, I can think of at this point. Now, when we live today, most likely we would have young people out there who are aspiring to get into pharmacy school. Where should, who should they contact? How should they get in touch to be able to, to benefit from the resources you just explained to us that they are available through the education committee? What are some of the areas who should they contact? Is there a number or how can they get to people so that they don't go around grouping in the dark trying to find help? In terms of, uh, of pharmacy, uh, I speak for, for the profession of pharmacy. I'm a clinical pharmacist at this point, and anybody who is interested in, in, in the profession can, can, can uh, you know, contact me. Um, you, get, you have my contacts. We have an e-forum in our community here, which is mincom at yahoogroups.com. Um, my cell phone number is always posted on there. And there are other pharmacists in the community I can refer you to if you, you get interested. So in thank you very profession. much, Dr. Robin, for Tamukong for coming to this program. And I'd like to say that you have a very nice jacket. I think looking at just your jacket, one would like to become a pharmacist. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on that note, we come to the end of our program today. But please stay tuned to Minkam TV because in the weeks ahead, we shall be inviting members of the Education Committee to come talk with us. And that's not all.
There's many more. The health committee will be coming too. Until then, maybe you all have a Merry Christmas. And Dr. Robin de Fortamco, Merry Christmas to you and Happy New Year. Merry Christmas to you, Mr. Ken Fobin, and it's Happy New Year. And thank you again for being here. Good Jeje, so da wa.